Welcome to So and So, brought to you by Bernina, made to create. I'm Meg Goodman, and you're about to enjoy a casual conversation with a special member of the Soist community. A conversation about how they got started, what inspires them, what excites them, and their connection to this community. Our guest today is Maritza Ataide, the Assistant Director of the Gamma Phi Circus. Well, before we meet Maritza, though, let's learn a little bit about the circus. In 2023, Gamma Phi Circus celebrates their 94th year as an organization at Illinois State University and is the oldest and longest running collegiate circus in the United States, carrying forward a long held tradition of circus in Bloomington Normal and the Midwest. In 1926, Athletic Director Clifford Pop Horton organized groups to tumble and perform pyramids at the university's football and basketball games. Well, that led to the formation in 1929 of the Gamma Phi Fraternity, renamed Gamma Phi Circus in 1931. Gamma Phi Circus performers are found within such organizations as Circus Olay, Disney Cruise Lines, Shrine Circuses, Circus Kingdom, and Kelly Brothers. Now our guest, Maritza Ataide, is a fourth generation circus performer and owner who has performed with her family circus, Circo Ataide Hermanos, Wriggling Brothers and Barnum Bailey Circus, Big Apple Circus, George Carden International Circus, as well as in musical theater. She's worked for Gamma Phi Circus since 2013 and was promoted to assistant director in 2020. Maritza oversees the creation of all costumes for the circus, choreography, and aerial arts. Hi, Maritza, and welcome to So and So. Hello, how are you, Meg? I am really good. Uh, you and I were talking right before we hit record, and and you are very busy because you're about to get into costuming and and for the eventual spring performances of the circus. Uh, so our timing is really good to talk right now. And and I'd like to start pretty much at the beginning. Um, how did you learn to sew? <laughs> well, it's it's a long story. I mean, I'm going to try to make it compact because you know. But it's it's been um, it's been a journey, um, as you mentioned. Uh, my family uh, we do have the show and everything. And for many years, when I start performing, we have our, our our lady who used to do all our customs and designs for the productions and everything. And um, I was part of the of the dancers in the beginning, and I became aerialist and working. Uh, with the animals too, performing with elephants and dogs. And when I was very young, obviously they ha- we have the pe- people who made the customs for us. So I was not really in that mood yet. But actually what made me <laughs> start doing that is when I was working for Ringling Brothers as a dancer and aerialist. Uh, also, we have designers. We have the people who take care of our costumes and everything. We have the wardrobe people who make sure that our costumes was always clean. Uh, if it was an issue with the zippers to, to fix them and everything. And then when we, me and my husband, decided to put together our area lag and audition for Fell, Mr. Fell, we have to audition with... Uh, with the costume, with prop, with everything to be considered maybe in future uh, productions to be part of Ringling Brothers. And I remember uh, I didn't know how to cut, how to do, you know. So since it was private costume, I cannot ask the wardrobe people to do mm-hmm. it for me mm-hmm. or their designers. So I asked uh, help for a... It was a lady from, in that time, was Czechoslovakia or the Czech Republic. Mm-hmm. And I asked her to help me out to, to, to do the costume. I actually designed it. I, I draw what I want. And um, she said, no problem. And I was in Louisville, Kentucky. A friend of mine, then she did use hers. She used to do her. She recommended me where to buy the material. So I went, buy everything. And the lady, uh, she just cut the costumes, which I was in that time, I was 99 pounds and I have a small bikini. And my husband was 
and those days also very slim. So the only thing she did was cut the custom, just sew together in the sewing machine because I didn't know how to sew. And in those days, uh, she charged me $400 for my custom, $400 for my husband. Mm-hmm. I did all the applications myself. I sewed everything. I decorated everything. And then is when I realized when in those days you didn't make that much money, then I pay a fortune for just to cut and sew it a zigzag in the sewing machine. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it's when I come to the point, then I went and I went to my other fellow performers and they used to do their costumes and I went. With the, actually the, the girl who helped me to find that fabric place to buy everything. And I tell her, can you teach me how to, I can do my patrons and to do my own costumes? And she did. And then I started getting, you know, help from another ones and learning a little bit more how to be more uh, creative and to do it for myself. And, and it's how it, I started. Because I say, I, I cannot afford, you know, to, until I don't be settled in something. So this is actually how I start. And I was, in those days, I was 20 years old. So, mm-hmm. and then with the, with the time going and be close, uh, looking into, I start in, in Ringling, for example, every extra job that you want to do or help. You, you was getting paid for it. So I say, okay. So they, they say, oh, wardrobe is need to change the sequence in one of the production number costumes. Who is available? And I say, I pick up my hand. I say, I do it. I do it. <laughs> uh-huh. So it's how I, I actually start getting involved with it and learn. And, and I like the glamorous. I like, I start looking more into the fashion side and looking for a new ideas, you know even for my own costumes, but also when I, we finished in Ringling, we went back in Mexico and then also I started pitching in and with my family into creating costumes for the production numbers. And, and then when I have already my first son, he was just a little one. And then in Halloween, I always go and say, how you want to dress? And then he start picking you know, like, okay, I want to be like this performer. I want to be like that. And then I start also creating for him as as my, you know, like, okay, I'm going to play around with him and doing customs for him. And then I discover also then I didn't start, I didn't like no more the sequence. I like more the rhinestones. And mm-hmm. I don't know if, if I know then they used to call it here Lugo Beats. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So I start using more Lugo beads, which I love. I love the crystal because also the the shiny is different in the costumes. And then, um, then we start performing in a different places. And when came the opportunity to be in Big Apple, is when I got actually more close to the designers because I took over costume. I was the supervisor for the costume department and wardrobe department. And then when Big Apple was preparing for a new production number, we, we start the season in September. But all August is practicing and putting together finishing costumes and everything. But as soon as we start, the new designer come along. So I start working very close with them. Mm-hmm. And, and my first let's say, working together with, with a French designer, David Bellagou, and everything used to come from, from France because he, he'd get the designs, he get the measurements for the performers are coming, and he have his shop in, in, in France, and he do everything there. And then the costumes come to New York, and sometimes uh, the acts, especially like, like Chinese troops or they decide that they change people. So sometimes you happen, then the costumes arrive and then you have to alter it because either they change the person or the person got injured. So the size are different. And also this is where I learned to how to work more 
uh, details, like more theatrical costumes, because Big Apple was more uh, like a, the theme always was more elaborate. And mm-hmm. the wardrobe was extremely expensive. The houses that they used to do the costumes was Broadway houses, where they do for theaters, where they do for mm-hmm. all the opera. And I had the opportunity to every time we come from, we, the base for Big Apple was in Walden. So it's like 80 miles. So we used to go with David to check how the costumes was going. And... um and sometimes you go in, and I was start being more noisy because those shops they they don't not only do the costumes but also do the shoes, the wigs, the hats, whatever production number needs. So, and I was start being very noisy, and uh, <laughs> and then I ask him, okay, for who is this custom? Oh, this is for Phantom of the Opera for Christine. He said we have to redo the custom because you know it's already. Every certain time they redo all the costumes for the musicals. And I don't know if I mentioned, but since I was a dancer and I was super fan of uh, Marishnikov, it was my my mentor as a dancer. So I was uh, with David Bellagu uh, coming from Walden to New York and we was in Grand Central. So he stopped to put his uh, film to develop. And I was like, hey, we're late for Carelli. We got to go to Carelli. Oh, hold on. So we got into Carelli, the the shop. And then I saw this costume in front of me and I say, oh, this is gorgeous. And I say, for who is this costume? Or for which musical is? And they say, oh, that's for the recital for Mikhail Baryshnikov. And I was like, what? (laughs) Yes. And say, you just miss him. He just was here. You miss him for five minutes. He was trying his costume. And I'm just, I turned to David Bellow when I said, did, did you just hear that? I just missed my opportunity to meet him in person. So, so the lady from Carelli, that was the, the, the company, she said, don't worry. I'm going to give you a picture of him fitting his costume. And then they gave me a picture because they saw me so upset. Uh-huh. And I couldn't meet him. But it's, you know, it's in some moments you have like um, these moments and you spend so much time and detailing and see all what takes to mm-hmm. create a costume. And some of them, they're very, like they say, he was very uh, particular, very uh, perfectionist, no? Mm-hmm. Barishnikov, mm-hmm. which I guess everybody should be when come the time on, on that level or performer. And I have so many uh, beautiful experience with the designers, also not so beautiful today than in September 11th. Today in the morning I was watching. And the next year uh, we have Mirena. She was Romanian designer. Mm-hmm. And, and today I remember watching, you know, they're doing all the this, honoring all the people who, when this was the planes. And I was with her when we saw the plane crash, working on the costume. And for our listeners, um, just so you know, um, we are recording this on September 11th. Mm -hmm. So that's why this is is so personal for Maritza. Yes, it is indeed. Because it was, we was in Walden. That day was a, a dress rehearsal. So we was working early in the morning. In wardrobe, try to finish in the details in some of the costumes for the performers. When we saw the one of the powers, you know, and then her sure. family was in um, in in New York City, so it was very uh, emotional in the moment for everybody. And a lot mm-hmm. of the musicians used to come from the city, and the city shut down and everything, and without knowing what was happening. But at the same time, they decided. It was shocking, but we have to continue with the rehearsal, you know? Sure. And um, and Mirena Rada, she was like emotional because everybody, I guess, was shocking for the entire world. And But we accomplished and we finished it, even as emotional it was that specific day. The show must go on, you know? Indeed. And, and your, your adventures, um, with the circus, with sewing have opened up so much to you. Um, what, 
What I think our listeners would love to know about as we get to know you is that your family has their own circus. So tell us about what it's like to grow up in a circus family. Well, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, let's say, because since little you are in it. And, uh, but the, for me, the most, um, my dream always was to be an aerialist because my mom was aerialist. And, and also I want to be part of the show as a little kid. And, um, and it's to know all these different performers from different parts of the world. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and play al- along with their kids, you know, and the different accents and the different culture, you know, like, uh, like some of the performers, they have some rituals, you know, like maybe you don't, we have a, some tradition is you don't put your shoes on the top of your table or your, or your makeup place, you know, or you don't use certain color. And it's, you know, it's different countries. They have different superstitions, let's say. Sure, sure. I didn't know that, huh? Oh, different rituals. Mm -hmm. Then, like, uh, with us, it was like, we don't get in in the tent, in the circus tent, with an open umbrella. Uh, And it's different things. You know, times are changing. The the circus culture also has been changing. Uh, You have more like I say, more like putting more production, theatrical. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe they have more like experience, extremely performance, you know, like now they extremely uh, sports and now they are considered circus, you know, before mm-hmm. it was a taboo. Like, for example, a pole dance before was something for uh, clubs for gentlemen. And today mm-hmm. is today is a sport official sport and also it's a it's an art now it's in show business in shows you see them so it's nothing like before was so it's well it's very like, athletic uh, you you uh, see though everywhere now yes it's, it's already come like out of the of the taboo there was and sure. became a art and we gotta take it that way so for me also growing up with the family business also is like, uh, even then we are in the family also was also like, we got to follow the rules. Mm -hmm. And let's say if I want to sit in the front seat, I was not allowed because the people pay a ticket to sit there. (laughs) And, and, and and my family was like, especially my dad was like, if, if we don't put the example, how we pretend to the performers follow the rules. How old were you when you started performing with the circus? I was 13. An aerialist. Yeah. I, it, I, I just, I think about what aerialists do and it's uh, amazing. Was it just natural for you or did you have to get over some fears of heights or you said your mom did it. So you kind of grew up seeing this. Yes. I, I wasn't afraid of the heights. I, and, um, and I didn't start right away in a big part. I started a little thing, you know, like we start like a, just even just in the parade, going around the parade. And then they sent us, uh, that's why how we, I got into musicals too, because if I want to be a dancer, since we was like six, they put us to ballet because also ballet is uh, elegance and give you all these lines to present better the acts. So since very young age, we was doing different style of dance from ballet to jazz stuff, you know, belly dancing. Mm -hmm. So we be more, um, have more versatility to be a dancer. And then also uh, my family uh, in Mexico City, we did have this, they they got that big, big uh, tent from Italy, which also was made with a stage. So sometimes we have plays, uh, uh, musicals, or, or, or we have groups playing or even wrestling. So the business was more versatile, not only mm-hmm. the circus. So it's how we got, me and a couple of my cousins, is how we got into involved in the, in the theater because we start being more involved with that. And then we used to go and audition for dance, 
to be part of it in some musicals. And this, this also gives us the opportunity to learn not only the side of the circus ring, but also more staging and how also can be so demanding the, the theater part of it. Too. So, so there's a lot, a lot that goes into performing in, in the circus that I don't think people understand. Now, what I'm, I'm curious about is you are now celebrating your 10th anniversary at, at Gamma Phi, mm-hmm. um, the circus at Illinois State University. How did you find them and begin your career with them? Well, here is, uh, when we was in Big Apple Circus, my older son was, uh, with Big Apple Circus, we did have a, a travel school. We have a, a charter school then for this, the performers kids and they go to school or the employees and the families travel with them to go to school. And then my older son was on his uh, senior year in high school and we always want to he take uh, a major to go to college because even then we love performing, uh, the career is not too long. And mm-hmm. and in these days also even to, to you can read a contract is a lot of terms and higher education would open you different fields. And maybe if you don't want to perform no more, you have another plan B, you know, you mm-hmm. can... Sure. Or you can combine both things uh, if you want to, uh, because like I say, you know, my, my older son, he's a hand balancer and he's all shoulders, you know, and, and physical. And come the moment, then you got to step out of the, of the performing. The body don't give you no more. It's like a gymnastic. You, what's, what's the average age people stop performing in a circus because of what you're talking about? Well, uh, an aerialist. All depends also how you take care of your body in your so your mm-hmm. how much you you take care of yourself. Usually, we'll say middle forties if okay. you're in a good good uh, you know is if they whoever make it to the fifties is because they're being very disciplined, extremely, mm-hmm. and they don't have no serious injuries. Um, but like usually it's acts then that you can run it for longer period because mm-hmm. also, um, let's say if you're today, they, I don't know how long more we're going to be able to see animals performing in, in the right. rings. Mm-hmm. But like if you're a, a horse trainer, you know, you, the men always can use a beautiful uh, tuxedo and look great. You know, a lady can use a long gown, cover the neck or, you know, usually in a woman's the neck, you can see the wrinkles or the your arms are start losing muscle. Mm-hmm. So certain acts you can still cover it. A magician you can even cover it, you know. If but like if you're contortionist, if you're aerialist, you know, this is more physical or well, acrobat. This is all knees, uh, joints. So probably uh, I would say in general probably fifties is okay. when. Most of them, they step up. A clown, um, traditional clown, uh, if you're getting older, you know, you, you just use your clothes baggy, more baggy. <laughs> <laughs> like like anyone who ages, any of us. So yeah. so you, you were sharing, um, you were talking about your son and um, getting an education. And uh, I, I stopped you to learn because I was very curious about how long people can be in the circus. But take us back to what you were saying about uh, how you found Gamma Phi Circus. Well, so when, when this happened, um, one of his teachers, uh, she, in the circus community, we have some magazines or some, uh, uh, usually it's, Every two months or every six months, they come these report magazines and they tell you what's going on. If it's if anybody need a acrobat or need this or that, you know, it's like an information theater. Also, have all these kind of magazines for or auditions or whatever it's going to be uh, moments, and they need specific things. So. She used to work or she used to write articles for this magazine and 
And then she tell him as a part of his English class, he said, okay, Christian, you've been in these festivals. Festivals in circus is like competitions, international competitions. So he said, I'll write about how you like to, when you went to Italy, how, what you like it or what was your experience to meet other kids, you know, and compete. And, and he used to do this. And then when he was on his, um, in his journal, looking already, putting applications for colleges, she said, okay, Christian, you have an act. You're already international level, then they know you. What is for you leaving the comfort of the circus and going to college? And what is your opinion and what is it? So he wrote an article. And the previous director of Gamma, he, he received that magazine, so he saw that. And then we was coming back to Big Apple in February when I already all the applications was already deadlines and everything. And I got a call from a, a circus fans. Uh, it's people that love the circus and they follow us or whatever, you know. And then he contacted me and he said, I'm so-and-so and um, I wonder if you don't mind if I give your number to Adlight. Adlight is the director for Gamma Phi Circus. Mm. in Illinois State University. Mm -hmm. And he saw the article of Christian and he was wondering if if Christian might be interested to come to Illinois State because they have a circus program. At that point, the only program that I know was Florida State. Mm -hmm. And we thought and he got accepted in Florida State. And um, one, because close to Florida, to Sarasota, where is the circus town, Orlando, and we have family, and I say always will be somebody in the community that if you need something, they will help you. Sure. And that's how we got to know Gamma, and then he contacted us and everything, and and then he said, "Come and see the program, and let me know. We can have it can be able to we can put him into." It's no problem. I would talk with admissions and everything because it would be a good achievement, a good thing Then somebody who is already professional want to come to university, leave everything, study something, and be part of a program. So we came, and, um, we came to a preview here and was during the summer. And when we was three days here, he met some of the students. They were so excited to talk to him, to his experience and everything. And then he say, and then I say, okay, you make up your mind. Where do you want to go? I mean, obviously they they making all the efforts so you come here and then you have also Florida State. What do you want? And then he said, mom, I want to stay in Illinois State. I hmm. feel more welcome. And, and I feel very, I didn't feel awkward. Because he always thought then to be in a class only himself in the in in the travel school, you know, and then come to a university, which he will feel maybe a little bit the outsider, but actually they make him feel so welcome, then is how he decided to stay here. And it's how we actually we were introduced to Gamma. And then mm-hmm. obviously he started school and then we went to Mexico. And then the first spring show, which was in 2010, he, he worked the hand balancing with the Chihuahua. And then he told me, Mom, can you bring the dog so I can do my, my act in the show? So the first year is how I came here. Uh, my husband didn't come. I just came alone and I saw the students and they was like, I, I'm used to, to see professionals, you know, and see them do it. And, and I was so impressed to see all these kids doing homework and a study and at the same time helping each other when they're not kids from circus, you know, mm-hmm. and putting together a show, you know. Uh, and, and I came back to Mexico and I was like, the program is, is, is great. I mm-hmm. think, I, think uh, I was so surprised. If I tell you the truth, I was very amazed mm-hmm. to see all these kids. Then they just want to do circus too, even just for the time they are in college, or maybe they want to pursue professionals, which today they, 
Today, we have some, then they already pursued professional. Mm -hmm. But in the summer, they perform professional, getting paid for it. And they can taste what is to be officially working in, in, in the level of professional. Mm -hmm. And this is how we got introduced to them. And then uh, on and on, the next year we came, my husband helped already Marcos Alawan, and he's the director. Because he saw him, then he was alone, and he needs, you know, and that's what we do. So my husband said, "Hey, if you want to help you, I can help you. I'm going to be here all the week. By the time you guys rehearsal, and this is how it comes. Then the idea, then maybe to we, uh, my husband got hired, and he was hired first, and then alone. Then I came first as a volunteer, helping the girls, helping to teach them how to put better makeup." And, and helping with the costumes. And little by little is how I come in into the picture. So so it was fate and a chihuahua that, mm -hmm. that brought you <laughs> <laughs> to Camify. Yeah. So, Maritza, now, nowadays you mentor a group of student sewists for the circus. What do you teach them and how do they get interested and involved in Gamify? So as the program getting bigger and bigger, not only because of that, but also when I got here, uh, or we got here, no, no one of the kids uh, know how to sew. You know, they didn't have the tools, maybe one sewing machine or whatever. And I was seeing them in the ground trying to do the little effort. You know, they didn't have no whatsoever idea of how to cut. So early stages, the customs, uh, it was very... Uh, just, you know, students, and they don't have no idea. So when I started stepping in, uh, I started guiding them, helping them. And the first one I got, one of the girls, then uh, she became like in the community for costumes. And we started being more production numbers, more and in, in try, try to help them to how to jam the costumes, how to do it, how to try to, to cut better the pants, you know, for the boys. Make a longer lane. Always you can take in if there's somebody shorter, you know, because you got to reuse them in some point. And that girl, uh, Savannah, uh, she changed her major. She started getting so much involved and she said, you know what? I start liking it. So she changed for, I don't remember what was her, her first thought. To, she want to go for it. And she moved to fashion. And today they... Uh, well, she did that. Then she went to abroad in Italy. A, a teacher there gave her the contact to work for us for a, in the summer in New York, assisting some designer. And today they, she worked already in the costume department for Broadway. Mm. So she just, as just learning little, got involved. Then I have later on, I got another kid, and then he stayed with us five years, and he was so the same thing. He was for something else, and then he got so much into then he loved to go in fashion, and even in the summer he used to tell me, "Look, did you like my design? Look what I'm. Did you think this might be working for that and all that?" So I let them also to. They can be express themselves. Like sometimes I say, if I see two years ago, I have a girl then she was for in, inside designer, inter, in, indoor designer, you know, mm -hmm. and she paint beautiful. And I say, you're in the community, you're head community. Why do you use your skills and let's create costume, painting costume? So we did the costumes, the, the theme of the, of the, the act was the garden so the costumes of the girls was flowers and i let mm -hmm. her use her creativity or using her skills of painting into the costumes so so what special things or considerations that we don't see or, or or know about as people who are watching these acts what has to go into the design and and making of circus costumes well first of all is then uh we got to see also the flexibility of how much flexibility we need in the costumes to be able to, 
to tumble, to be able to, they feel comfortable. Uh, there's some acts and if the custom is uh, tighter or don't stretch, won't, won't, won't hurt the act, you know? Mm-hmm. Because uh, it's more only shoulders. If it's a juggler, unless they tumble, there can be, you know, they can be with more uh, regular cotton pants, you know, or satin shirts. In versus like if you are in 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 titibor, then you need to be able to take off from uh, the titter you know, the, the titibor and flip mm-hmm. in the air. Then you need uh, lycras. You need more flexibility. The same is dancers. Dancers depends the dance you're putting into. If it's just a flapper, don't need too much of a of a, a flexibility, you know. Mm-hmm. But sure. if you are if you are a if you're doing jazz or you're just doing hip hop, you need costumes and they can be able to to move, you know. So it's all the what we take when we start thinking on the theme and we start thinking on the what is going to be the act is how we. We start thinking, like, like now, like I say, in October, after auditions, already some of the acts, they already know what is going to be the theme. So I already start thinking what will be the costume. Do you have any interesting behind-the-scenes stories that you can, can share with us? Like for next year? Yeah, or, or something that happened involving a, a costume or, you know, certain, uh, like a, a fun story of something that happened. Well, I would tell you, two, two years ago, well, not, not this year, last year, the thing was follow your dreams. Mm-hmm. And the, the theme of the show was this girl, that, and she fought to sleep, right? And in her dreams, uh, she go to different places. That's why one, one of the acts was the garden. Then we have another one. Then the Tidbor Act, for example, was then she have a nightmare. So the beginning was... If it's a nightmare, something that is nice but not scary for you because you you have little children coming. So we decide to move to do skeletons, but funny skeletons, you know. Mm-hmm. So and we use the neon colors to make the bones and painting. We use hand painting there for that. And and then we have makeup artists too. Then they help the the performers to teach them to do a fast makeup. As a skeleton. When we come to the skeleton's costumes, we did all the bones with neon color to make it more, uh, more creativity, more funny. Not just the white bones, you know, mm-hmm. to look more um, attractive. Also, using the lighting with the blue light to make it more, more that more different, you know, than for the the audience then they come and see the show. And it was funny because, of course, you have sometimes the students and they have big concerns like, oh, but the people is going to be afraid and this is a skeleton. And, and I said, trust us, watch. And then the kids, they love it because at the same time, some kids they thought was Coco from the movie Coco. You know? Oh, sure, sure. So it comes like a, a big plus uh, in the act and they didn't realize then and didn't come as scary or spooky, actually come very entertained. But this is some things that sometimes you face, you know, sometimes with so many students, sometimes some they think then, or they don't, they feel that they're not flutter, you know. I try to make everybody to be flutter. You know? mm-hmm. Sure. Because also the prototype of bodies, sometimes there are certain costumes and they may don't look good on, on very let's say in a very, very skinny girl mm-hmm. or you have girls and they have hips, you know, so we got to work out that I try to make them look and they look flatter, you know, mm-hmm. because you have girls with a beautiful bodies then no matter what you put them, they're going to look stunning. And then you have girls and maybe they're a little bit more curvy than certain style of costumes. They may mm-hmm. don't help. You know, you have girls with more uh, bigger breasts then you need to help them. So you, you aim for body positive costumes. Yes. It's, uh, it's a lot of work. And, and you've got a, a lot of kids who are only with you for one, two, three, maybe four years. Uh, a lot of turnover because they're not employees of the circus. How many students do you think in your 10 years you've worked with? 
a lot probably. When when we just when we just start, the program was like about seventy mm-hmm. kids, and like I said last year, we was almost hundred and thirty. And right mm-hmm. now we are on early stages. But yesterday was in the gym with maybe kids then they may stay with us mm-hmm. and returners we call returners the ones that they already with us mm-hmm. it was about 150 kids yesterday wow in the gym it's a lot of costumes you're going to be making if they all stick around yep <laughs> <laughs> maritza you said that um the uh, uh the theme uh for last year was follow your dream what's mm-hmm. what's your dream what's next for you you know i'm i I used to be very, um, when I was like eight, all that, you get that uh, kid overweight and you get chubby, you know? Mm-hmm. And and then I, I getting close to my 15th birthday, you know, or when I knew then I was going to be part of the show, I started working more on that. And then also I was very bad in clothing myself, you know, like I think then I look good like a cowboy when I not. So... Later on, I started liking it and, and knowing all these people and, for example, walking in New York and see all this. I I really like fashion and I didn't know it a long time. And I started looking always like what is new, what is something then to me, even for myself, then something uh, to look good and to make a difference. But I love fashion. and. Mm-hmm. And I know then I am 55 and I know then in my 55 years old, I was from the, from the seventies, uh, hippie, agogo clothing to cowboys, to disco, you know? So, and then also, you know, in the eighties, they, they start using again, the high top of skirts, like very fifties, you know, very tight or the mermaid skirts. And I see it in the fashion comes and go. By now, again, it's coming back to the 70s, mm-hmm. the way I see it. So, but I, I, I would love to continue doing this if I can help anybody to maybe not change their mind what they want to do, but uh, to see what is the fun to do costumes, mm-hmm. to use your imagination on what can be done and and to use their different skills no no like if they're going for like i say if they're going for a maybe they have a different major and they can use it inside costumes you know sure i don't know like maybe like if they're going engineering but they can create some kind of robot costume you know <laughs> many opportunities and and in all the years that you've been there um, it must be fascinating to see how some of the students have gone on to to work in Broadway or Cirque du Soleil or really change their lives because of the work you did with them. Yes, it's, it's, it's very satisfactory when I see when they pursue their dreams, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I say, some of them, they just come and they stay, they, they stay with the program for the fun of to have something else to do during the four years in college. They're the ones and they go pursue um, professional and Mm -hmm. then they maybe they do it for three years and they say, you know, I I did it. I try. I enjoy it, but I want to continue with what I study for it, which is okay. And the ones then they, then maybe they never perform an act, but they're performing or they're doing their, they're in sound designers, lighting designers for like for Soleil, and there are a bunch of them. And they're not in the particular spotlight, but they're behind the scene. And this is also very important. Maritza, in everything we've talked about uh, on, on this episode, is there a question I didn't ask you that you wish I had? I know. I don't think so. <laughs> you know, this this has been fun going to going to the circus with you um, and hearing uh, a little known thing that that um, has been out there for so many years. And yet um, people haven't been aware. And I invite anybody who is interested to check out Gamma Pi Circus online. Uh, their performances will be next April. 
uh, certainly something that is is worth a trip to the Midwest if you're if you're not uh, in the area. Um, but certainly, do follow up on this. It's it's quite special, and um, I know that people will want to reach out to you to to learn more, Maritza. So, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? They can. Um, I'm in Facebook. Um, if somebody wanna contact me or have questions or something, you can. Give them my email if you want to. Sure. What is your email? It's M A T A Y D E 88 at yahoo.com. This has been wonderful. I, I thank you so very much for sitting down with us today. No, and the only thing that is, is important to the, the, the listeners uh, know that all these kids, uh, and they go through, through Gamma. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, sometimes they juggle many things at the same time because first of all, uh, they come to do circus because they want to try, they want to see the experience and everything. They're in communities like customs or props or or program, the different communities that we have, but also they got to go to school. They got to do homework. They got to do, uh, some of them, they work. Some of them even have to work two jobs. So they, they manage their time so they can be part of the program, mm-hmm. you know. So this is amazing. They're, they're college students. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and as, when, as a college student, they do so much, and yet such, um, such dedication is required for, for working with you and Gamma Phi. And, and um, it is certainly a, a shout-out to all of the students who are a part of this. Yes, yes, they deserve it. <laughs> Indeed. Maritza, thank you again for joining us today. Thank you so much. And it was nice to talk to you. And hopefully when you come down, we can chat more in person. I would love that. Well, there you have it. Another story about someone just like you, someone for whom sewing and quilting is so much more than a hobby. It's a way of life and it's a connection to something bigger. If you know someone you think has an outstanding story, a story that should be shared on this podcast, please drop me a note to meg at soandsopodcast.com or just fill out the form on our website. Be sure to subscribe to, review, and rate this podcast on your favorite platform and visit our website, soandsopodcast.com for more information about today's and all of our guests. That's S-E-W-A-N-D-S-O podcast.com. And finally, I want to thank Bernina for making this program possible. I'm Meg Goodman, and I look forward to you joining us next time on So-and-So. So-and-so.